Welcome to part four of this training series. In this short video, we will walk you through the next step in developing a causal loop diagram, which is variable elicitation. Once our group of stakeholders had come to consensus and defined the variable problem using a reference mode, the next step was to brainstorm potential variables influencing the problem. The adapted script in the resources section explains the instructions for doing this activity in more detail. However, the overall purpose is to elicit key variables that become the inputs for other activities. The outcome of this activity is consensus on a prioritized list of variables related to the reference mode problem. When brainstorming variables, there are three rules to try to follow that will make the modeling process easier. Before asking the participants to generate a list of variables, they were given, first given these rules. The participants were instructed to try and use these rules as much as possible, but not to worry so much that it kept them from being able to generate a list. Rule number one, variable names are either nouns or, non, or noun phrases. For example, you could use the noun consumption, not the verb consuming. Another example is food waste instead of wasting food. Rule number two, variable names must have a clear sense of direction. For example, instead of calories, we'd say calorie intake. Calorie intake has a clear sense of direction. It can either go up or down depending on how much a person eats. Whereas the word calories on its own does not provide a sense of direction. Similarly, processed foods served instead of just processed foods. Processed foods is ambiguous in its meaning and direction. However, if we add the word serve to the variable, now we can see a clear sense of direction. Rule number three, choose variables whose normal sense of direction is positive. Avoid variables that have negative prefixes such as non and un. Using negative prefixes will make it more difficult to follow the link in your, in your model. For example, use processed foods served instead of unprocessed foods served. As social connectedness was identified as a variable problem in the reference mode activity, and the goal was to change the status quo of low social connectedness to a higher level, we asked the question, what are the barriers to increasing social connectedness in this neighborhood? This task focusing question was written on the whiteboard. Participants were then asked to write down as many problem related variables as they could on their sheets of paper. The participants to each developed a long list of variables that they saw as barriers to increasing social connectedness. For instance, transiency of the population, affordable housing, racism, family cohesiveness, access to community spaces, and cultural diversity were all variables that were brainstormed by group members. The participants were given about 15 minutes to generate their individual lists. After that time, we went around the room and each person shared a variable which was then written on the whiteboard. We then discussed each variable, which variables were most important, ranked them and identified the top 15 variables. The final results are shown in this picture. These top 15 variables were carried over to the next activity, creating connection circles. Now it's your turn. Take the problem variable that you identified after the last video and finish this sentence, or adapt the sentence to fit your problem variable. Next, try to generate a list of 15 variables that are barriers to achieving the change in the pattern that you desire. Keep these 15 variables for the next activity.